Hello, my name is Gabriel Harp. I'm the Research Director with the Alliance for the Arts and Research Universities at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. And I want to share with you a project where we've been looking at evaluating the impacts of arts-based experiences, a work, and it's a workflow for understanding the personal development, the emotional impacts, and conceptual uh, change aspects associated with uh, uh, participation and engagement in, in particularly the fine performing and applied arts and design. So what is it? This project makes use of a large collections of student responses to produce uh, text as data, their responses as data for analyzing and interpreting the roles and the impacts of arts-based experiences, as well as other types of experiences. For example, such as the broader impacts of public engagement around scientific concepts, cultural experiences in general, or technolo even technological affordances such as the ability to transition to different forms of energy use. And there are many more applications too. Um, this project was motivated by wanting to uh, develop some better tools for assessing different facets of learning, such as the categories and the frames that people use to describe the impacts of their experiences, as well as the learning outcomes. That, their perspectives on different topics and, and so on. And so survey research typically uses closed sets of response options and that sort of necessarily limits a diversity in the range of perspectives that can be included in the results of that research. And while it's been traditionally time consuming to analyze thousands of open-ended responses, uh, computational approaches such as this have made it somewhat easier to get good results that can be used in projects around learning ad analytics, cultural research, and policy assessment. So we've been working to create an end, end workflow for transforming semi-structured, open-ended interview responses collected via a written survey or via a web-based survey uh, through an audio recording or a video recording that can then be transcribed into text-based data. Um, first, we transcribe the audio or the video recordings which can be an automated process, which costs uh, through some services about a dollar per minute. And then for all sets of responses, we clean those uh, that text and prepare it as, as a text for analysis, um, including any other metadata that's associated with those responses, uh, demographic factors, uh, uh, other 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 um, aspects of uh, the sample that was that was studied. So this survey includes approximately 4,000 university undergraduate students who are surveyed via a web form. And it asks questions about the impacts, precursors, barriers, frequency, and perceptions of co-curricular arts engagement in college. And what's important to recognize is this workflow can have applications beyond the arts. So to assess and measure different uh, the broader impacts of engagement and learning in other domains for different populations and for a variety of use cases and scenarios, including the public understanding of science and other cultural domains. Why does this matter? Well, the work is important because it allows us to use more readily accessible means of collecting responses. Respondents simply reply in the same way that they would ordinarily speak or write, and those collecting the data don't need any specialized questionnaires, although to do the analysis, it is a bit more specialized at the moment. It helps identify a range of topics and frames of reference that are in use by the groups being assessed, ones that may or may not be known to a researcher ahead of time. Uh, we can see the relative prevalence of different perspectives and learning outcomes, and it helps us recognize correlations and hierarchy among the concepts or topics. So to help us tease out how certain topics might be contingent or gateway or threshold, threshold topics uh, to other topics down the line as well. And we can look at not only what respondents said, but also how they said it. For example, if respondents' responses were uh, more or less reflective, more or less deceptive, uh, more or less forward-looking, or more or less enthusiastic, in addition to the subject of, of their responses. And we can identify contrasts among the demographic factor levels, such as income, high school location, or prior experience for different dimensions of, of the responses. So I think one of the most important outcomes of this work is that forces researchers and educators and policymakers to look more systematically and deeply at the substance of what uh, people are saying about the impacts and about the broader impacts of their experiences, how it's expressed and, and how it may or may not be relevant to other salient aspects in their lives and their different concepts and assumptions. So I invite you to take a look at um, its artsengagementproject.site and I'll share the link in the accompanying materials. Thank you.